Okay, so I'm going to talk about audio receiver on television, and I'm just, you know, a little disgusted at the technology industry right now. You know, you spend about, say, $500 on a receiver. Believe it or not, that doesn't get you very far. That's low budget. That's what I re read online. So that means you're getting shit for what you paid for. So when you hook up all these sources to your receiver, you're not going to, there's going to be problems. Um, my receiver currently is plagued with all kind of HDMI bugs and stuff like that. If you go online, it's documented. It's the receiver I unboxed. You can look it up. Go to One Stars. You're going to see people that have complained about all these problems. Not just the HDMI bugs, but the constant changing of input while you're watching something. You could be watching Blu-ray and then it'll switch back to television. You could go back to Blu-ray and then it'll switch back to television. It'll keep doing that constantly. That is the most annoying thing I get all the time. Although, after you do it like three or four times, it usually stops. It's unacceptable. You spend $500, you should get something out of it. Not to mention the lag times it takes to switch from one input to another. I guess if you go up the ladder and spend, you know... About a thousand, fifteen hundred, or even they go up real high. You can go up. There's no, there's no real price range. You know, you can buy a receiver that's tens of thousands of dollars. I guess when you go up to that length, um, you get stuck. You, you don't get stuck with it. You get a good unit that'll instantly switch inputs. Now, a lot of these receivers will take a eight K inside, and it'll output an eight K. Usually, it's only on one or two ports. But that's pretty cool. I like having an eight, having that option. But you know what? At the same time, it kind of sucks. What the hell am I going to do with that? Nobody in their right mind really has an 8K TV right now that's 8K. What are you going to get to native content for 8K is beyond me. There will be something in streaming, I guess, eventually one day for the internet. But that's not going to even be the close to real 8K. And even if we get to that at some point... We still won't be able to watch 4K properly by then anyways, so what's the point? We don't even get the true 1080p signal at this point, as far as I'm concerned. St stream is streaming is streaming and all that other crap. Now, um, you just have to understand, there are receivers you can buy nowadays that are just regular setups that don't have Atmos or anything. But for $500, if you can get Atmos, you might as well get it, even if you're not going to use it. Maybe in the future you might use it. I mean, it is a good thing to have, I guess, but you got to have special speakers. I have it set up for Atmos, but I can't tell the difference. And it's not, I could spend $2,000 on a receiver. If I don't have the right speakers, what good is Atmos, in my opinion? Um, I'm just going to say people are not getting their money. I suggest if all you're going to do is buy a $500 receiver, just take it back to the store. Because if you have problems, or at least take it back to the store after you're um, done dealing with the issues... Don't wait, because if you wait and decide you don't want the, un the unit anymore, you're screwed. You're shit out of luck. Too many people buy stuff, they hang on to it for a little while, thinking maybe it'll get better. It never gets better, then they get stuck with it. That's the only thing that sucks. I'm recommending people not to do that. There are so many things you can choose from. If you have the money, what I don't understand is some people make, say, 100 k a year or more. And they, they don't want to spend more than $500 on a receiver. I mean, come on, just live a little. Buy the better receiver and get the better options out of it. Um, the receiver acts like a port to send all the signals to the TV now. You don't have to do anything. All the DVD, Blu-rays, um, anything you want to hook up. A lot of the high-end receivers even have component and composite still. Isn't that nuts? It's bullshit that a lower-end receiver doesn't have that, but a higher one does. That doesn't make much sense to me. Why a higher-end higher receiver that's like $1,500, for instance, has composite and component, but something that's $500, $500 doesn't have anything. All it has is the regular analog. Now, let me throw in stuff when I talk about LaserDisc. A lot of these um, players will upscale um, analog signals. It says it right on the um, description when you look at it on websites. I'm saying to myself, that's pretty cool, but I did a lot of research with LaserDisc and stuff, and people said that sometimes the upscaling isn't so good. So don't get too sip on, too excited thinking you're buying a new receiver, you're going to hook up your LaserDisc play to it, and it's going to look amazing. It's probably not. 
um, you can only upscale a signal so so well. And even if you spend fifteen hundred dollars, who knows how well that process is? I can tell you right now, though, um, you're gonna have to spend at least fifteen hundred dollars or more on a receiver to get a decent one. The five hundred ones, five hundred dollar one isn't gonna work. What I have right now is a real pain in the ass, and it doesn't work right, and it's a piece of junk. And um, that's why I don't watch a lot of 4K movies unless um, I have to. I can't watch anything on it because it just keeps malfunctioning. Just the other day, I had my projector hooked up to it. And um, the projector has an HDMI out for audio and for video. The video is run to my projector. The audio is run to my receiver. And when it's connected to my receiver, everything was going fine. I turned the, the program on. And all of a sudden, about... 20 minutes into the, the blacklist disc I was watching, the audio just went out for no reason. It wouldn't go back on. Now, he, I, I had to troubleshoot this after doing... This has happened several times with other programs. I had to troubleshoot it myself, and I had to figure out, no matter what you do, don't press any of the input buttons on the receiver, because then that'll turn the TV on, too. I'm running a projector, just to let you know. I would already told you. And if you do that, the TV will turn on, and then there'll be no way to turn the um, TV off without turning the receiver off. And you, have, you have to turn the receiver off, make sure the TV goes off, then you have to click the auxiliary button on the receiver, that'll activate the... Oh, and by the way, I even tried to turn it off. I, I, try, I turned the receiver off the right way, I turned it on again, still wouldn't play the audio. I have to cycle, which means power off and on, my Blu-ray player just to get it to play correctly. That sucks, because um, some Blu-ray players will leave off the last place they were at with a movie, but not all movies do that. So sometimes you have to remember where you were in the movie, and then when you remember where you were, um, you go back to that part if you go back in. It's a real pain in the ass. You know, I fought this with the Blu-ray player. Remember how many um, problems I had with that? Well, my LG, I have a backup Dolby Vision player, but it freezes all the time on the um, 4K discs. So I had to get a Sony. People complain about Sony, the Sony one freezing. Never froze on me once. I've played a bu bunch of different 4K movies. So that's that. So I'm just telling you some other problems. The biggest problem though, is that all, the biggest one of all is the master reset that I have to do once a week to keep it running. Um, that this is the biggest pain in the ass of anything. The digital handshake doesn't go through correctly. Now, they say that happens on most things. I've never seen it like this where you're forced to reset everything. I have to reset my TV once a week just for it to communicate right with the receiver. Um, I know it can go maybe three or four weeks without doing it, but I do it once a week just to be on the safe side. That is the biggest pain in the ass ever. If you don't, Eventually, you'll end up with an HD, yeah, HDCP warning saying it's not compatible with the blue screen, like the blue screen of death almost. Well, not really, because it's just a blue background, but still, there's a blue screen and a HDCP error. I get, that was so annoying, and that's what'll happen if you don't reset the television once a week. I, and it's not the TV, because the, the error you're getting on the television screen is coming from the receiver. So that means garbage. That's what happens when you spend, don't spend enough. And I feel bad for people who don't have the money. Because if you don't have, like I said, like a good $1,500 to blow, you're going to get a system that's junk. Um, and it sucks that I can't even use my speaker system with my laptop. Well, I can, but I can't use any Dolby software. You have to pay Microsoft at a fee. Now, I understand this. There's royalties and all that kind of other stuff. You have to pay Microsoft a fee to get Dolby Vision or anything else. That is absolute bullshit that you have to pay them for that, not Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos or whatever. You have to pay extra to get the extra audio. It's bad enough that you have to pay all the money for the computer, and you have to deal with their automatic updates every two seconds. They make you pay to just for a, a simple audio option like, that should be included. If you spend, like I told you, if you spend thousands on a computer, you have a really expensive gaming computer like I do, that should come with the computer automatically. It should not be an extra fee. And I don't even know how well it would work with the receiver. It's really not worth doing it. Because the only thing I could get to go in Adobe Atmos is streaming, like Netflix. There's no disk drives anymore. I can't pop a Blu-ray into my computer. 
Although I do have a Blu-ray drive, the blue DVD software, Blu-ray software I have is so obsolete, it won't play most of the Blu-rays I have. All that firmware bullshit. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Bye-bye.